This chapter is updated by NovelFree.tk You are listening at NovelFull.audio. Chapter 41 Murong Minyue's Invitation Translator Alisku A. Bone. Chilling wind blew through the frost forest. Eight players were facing one another in a stand. Off in the clearing. Clad in red armor and wielding a two dot handed broadsword, Su Yang glared at his enemies before saying coldly, What is the meaning of this? We got this armor fair and square. Finders keepers. You guys think you just can take whatever you want. Standing behind Su Yang was a beautiful priest clad in gray robes and a mage's staff. By itself her outfit was nothing special, but combined with her voluptuous body it was almost like an art of the gods. Her chest was positively trying to burst out of the confines of her robes. The priest was Muro Minyue, of course. She stared at the people in front of her calmly and smiled. You can save your breath, Su Yang. Can't you see the greed on their faces? They want to take your bronze dot great armor for themselves. Or at least try. We're not afraid of you people. Six people stood on the opposite side of Su Yang and Muro Mingyue. The leader of the group was a warrior called Shadow Maple, and behind him was an archer Shadow Deep Sea, a wanderer Shadow Volcano, and several other people. Their levels ranged from 25 to 29, and it was clear that their equipment was at least bronze dot grade. Shadow Maple took a step forward and smiled. Oh, brother hot sun, relax, it's just a saying. How about this? I can offer you two gold as payment if you give us your bronze dot grade armor. Two gold. Muro Mingyue couldn't help but sneer. You may as well stop talking and just rob us already. Do you think we're stupid? Bronze dot great equipment is worth at least ten gold on the market. Shadow Deep Sea dropped his act on the spot, raised his longbow and aimed an arrow at Muro Minyue, cackling. Look, pretty, I never liked hitting girls, but if you keep being stubborn then we'll have no choice but to do this the hard way. After we kill both of you, we will camp your corpses. Eventually we will get that chest armor. Murong Minyue gritted her teeth angrily and raised her own staff. However, there was nothing she could really do to these hoodlums. The world of heaven blessed favored the strong, leaving no room for reason. Rules were a social construct, created by people, so they could be torn down by people too. Those who broke the rules were almost always the voracious type. Shadow Maple suddenly raised his sword, edge of his blade glistening with white light. It was none other than the signature skill of warrior, Heavy Slash. It was a powerful skill that enhanced attacks damage by 10%. Shadow Maple was gunning for Muro Minyue, so Su Yang let out a roar and charged toward him. He knocked Shadow Maple out of the way and left a cut on his shoulder. 247, it was a considerable amount of damage, so Shadow Maple took two steps back and sneered, not bad, not bad. Brothers, let's get him together. Chang Chang. Shadow Deep Sea fired two arrows in a row, hitting Su Yang in the chest. 178, 201. It was a costly exchange. Su Yang's total HP was only around 500. How could he possibly endure this? It was at this moment a beam of holy light landed squarely on him. A green number appeared in the air plus 225. It was Muro Minyue. Her healing output was very impressive. Su Yang's HP was still losing HP rapidly, however. Obviously, a single priest couldn't outheal the damage done by several high-dot-level players. Die, bastard. Su Yang swung his broadsword in a domineering fashion, dancing around his enemies like a mad lion, but he couldn't make up for the difference in numbers. Even with heals and health potions, he was hovering on the edge of death. Meanwhile, Gue Guzi and Du 13 were still holding their breaths and watching the battle unfold from their hiding spot. When I saw them, I yelled angrily, What the hell are you two waiting for? Charge! Annihilate the Shadow Clan! Okay! Gue Guzi took off almost at the same time as me. Du 13 lagged behind a bit. 
red light surrounded the weeping fire blade. PvP was where my undead energy talent shone the brightest. The boost of 15% damage to living targets was nothing to scoff at. Pucci. I swung out the weeping fire blade from a steep angle and hit Shadow Deep Sea directly on the neck. The poor archer collapsed to the ground and died before he could even react. 484, good. My attack power is downright terrifying after equipping the soul turmoil armor and the bloody ring of protection. I zigzagged toward the enemy priest after killing the archer. The priest was a man with delicate features, and he died under the weeping fire blade with barely any resistance as well. On the other side, Gue Guzi let out a yell and executed flame thrust, skewering a mage like a piece of meat to roast. The Shadow Clan's party was only six men strong, and we had killed half of that almost instantaneously. Better yet, they didn't even have time to recover from their shock. Who's there? Shadow Maple shouted and turned around. When he saw me, a look of hate immediately overwhelmed his features. Broken halberd sinks into sand, you bastard. I haven't even settled my score with you at Fruit Forest yet. Die. Swoosh. Hot fire surged, and Shadow Maple executed the powerful heavy slash once more. I chuckled and simply allowed him to hit me on the chest. Bang. 117, most of the damage from Heavy Slash was cancelled out by Ghost Deity Armor, and I had a total 128 defense thanks to my Steel Dot Grade Helmet and Dark Steel Grade Armor. Moreover, I had 750 total HP in Regeneration of the Undead, a self dot healing passive. I was, in every sense of the word, a tank. How could Shadow Maple possibly kill me? While Shadow Maple was attacking me, I too swung my sword across his chest. A huge, miss, appeared in the air. He couldn't help but laugh. You call yourself a top 3 pro with this level of skill. What a joke. My evasion rate is pretty high, you know. Fuck you for killing my brothers. Die. In response, I simply curled my lips into a smile. Surprised by my reaction, Shadow Maple wasn't able to react when I moved closer to him again. Green light wrapped around the weeping fire blade as I executed my strongest technique, Pardon plus Slayer Slash. Crack. The attack cut right through Shadow Maple's chest armor. A huge damage number popped into the air, 1448. Ah. Shadow Maple's eyes widened like saucers. He couldn't seem to believe how much damage I had dealt to him. He glared at me in humiliation before he finally passed away. I kicked him in the chest and knocked his body to the ground. At the same time, I said in the party channel, 13, little Gue, don't say a word, and don't wait for Hot Sun and Murong Mingwe to thank us. We leave immediately after we clean up the rest of them. The reason I said this was because I didn't want to speak with Murong Mingwe at all. It was highly likely that my identity would be exposed the second a conversation started. Gue Guzi cleanly took out the remaining two players and was rewarded with a floor of health potions. Shadow Maple even dropped an iron dot grade leg guard. Unfortunately, it was a trash equipment with average stats and would sell for at most 10 silver on the market. Do 13 and I dutifully picked up everything on the floor before acting to leave. Meanwhile, Su Yang and Muro Mingyue still hadn't recovered from the shocking damage I dealt. By the time they finally came to, Gue Guzi, Du 13 and I were almost at the edge of the forest. Please wait, my heroes. Muro Mingyue caught up to us and asked with a smile, Broken Halberd sinks into sand, you're top three on the heavenly ranking, aren't you? Thank you so much for saving us. Are you interested in joining Ancient Sword Dreaming Souls? A bitter smile sprung to my face as I thought to myself. Oh, Sister Mingyue, what are you saying? I am a member of Ancient Sword Dreaming Souls already. I shot Do 13 a look, and he immediately turned around and said, I'm sorry, but we have our own guild, pretty lady. We're called Bloody Mercenaries. Why don't you join us if you're that interested? Right now the three of us are the only members in the group, 
and were in dire need of a pretty lady like you. Surprised by the interruption, Moro Mingue faced Du Thirteen and smiled. Ha, huh, I was just joking. Anyway, thank you very much for helping us. If there's anything you need from us in the future, just give us a call. Du Thirteen looked at the murder weapon hanging in front of Moro Mingue and gulped immediately. He was just about to make an improper request when I shot him a freezing look. Shivering back into reality, he immediately shook his head and said, forget it, didn't do it to help you. We did it because our factions are at odds. Saving you two was just a coincidence. Moro Mingue stood there blankly and didn't reply. I quickly took the opportunity to lead Gue Guzi and Du Thirteen into the forest and vanished from their sight. Dot later, Su Yang walked up to her and said, Mingyue. Did you notice? Notice what? Moro Mingyue turned around to face him. Su Yang stared thoughtfully at the forest before answering, Broken Halberd sinks into San's fighting style is incredibly similar to our old friends. Moro Mingyue shuddered and blurted, falling dust. Yeah. Su Yang nodded. Moro Mingyue bit her lips and murmured, but Lu Chen. He. He's already. Sigh. If only he was still with us. Eve wouldn't be so sad and beside herself. She had a real chance of becoming the president, but because of her current state that chance is gone now. Su Yang. Dot. Meanwhile, the three of us walked side by side through the frost forest. Ahem, so, what is our profit today? I asked. Gui Guzi smiled. We accepted three requests, earning five gold total. How about you, boss? I pondered for a moment before replying, sixteen gold. Wow, we're rich. Should we celebrate with a drink tonight? Huh, my thoughts exactly. Chapter 42 Wasp you are listening at novelfull.audio Translator Aliska that night at Sujo was particularly hazy. Pink lights peeked out of the foot baths in the streets, revealing the legs inside, nearby hawkers doing business as usual. The stalls they set up were called hawker stalls. You could find anything there, from an intestine to a literal piece of shit, just like in the movie, The God of Cookery. Right now, three youngsters were sitting around a table in front of the hawker stall and chatting with one another loudly. You guessed right, they were none other than Du Thirteen, Gue Guzi and me. Our table was filled with a couple of dishes and a ton of beer bottles. It was one of the highest forms of enjoyment to eat with your friends during such a bustling summer night. The way boss killed Shadow Maple today was truly awesome. Gue Guzi gulped down a bottle of beer before wiping his mouth. He smiled. Over 1400 damage in one hit. I bet that kid is feeling doozy right now. Du Thirteen asked, Lu Chen, what is that skill? Why is it so powerful? I put down my chopsticks and smiled. It's called Pardon. The first hit is always a miss, as you may have guessed from its name. The second hit however, is boosted and ignores a large portion of the target's defense. Ha, huh, no wonder. Come, let's drink one for Pardon. Gue Guzi laughed and raised his cup. We raised our own cups and drank. I wiped the beer off my mouth and smiled. Bloody mercenaries are off to a good start. It was our first day in business, and we've already earned 16 gold, the equivalent of at least 1,000 renminbi. Our current income is almost at the same level as the gold collars, uh. Gue Guzi asked with a smile. Boss. Brother B and I worked like farm animals, and all we got is 5 gold. How on earth did you earn 16 gold by yourself? I smiled. What do you do when a silly brunette shows up on your footsteps? Do 13's eyes lit up. You're talking about wind fantasy, beauty Lin Eason, right? Yep. Huh, well done, well done. Du Thirteen laughed loudly before turning serious all of a sudden. Lu Chen, do you know that Lin Eason has a new nickname at Floating Ice City? 
What is it? I asked confusedly. Fruit knife goddess. Do 13 laughed. What the hell is that? I don't know. Do 13 paused for a moment before continuing. But get this. There are a ton of Lin Eason screenshots on the forums, and most of the PvP ones show her taking opponent's life with a dagger. I don't know what skill that is, but she's shatteringly beautiful and she fools around with a dagger. That's why she's called the Fruit Knife Goddess. Do 13 smiled with a dreamy look on his face. Anyone who manages to win Lin Eason's love will have a perfect life. At the very least, I wouldn't give her away even if someone offered to make me an emperor. I couldn't help but snort at him. Give it up, brother. Lin Eason is far more complicated than you imagine. What do you mean? Do 13 looked a bit confused. I put down my chopsticks again before explaining, one, after Lin Eason and I fought each other and dropped a ton of levels, she realized that she didn't want an enemy like me and asked to meet me offline. Why do you think she thinks she can resolve our dispute peacefully if we met offline? It's because she's incredibly confident in her own beauty. I took a pause before continuing. 2. Lin Eason supposedly hired me to guard her while she gathered dreaming grass at Greenstone Mountain Valley. However, when we got there the Mad Dragon Guild just happened to be fighting a boss at that location. Lin Eason clearly used me to get what she wants. She's very smart, and she's definitely not just the pretty face you imagine her to be. Fuck. Do 13 also put down his chopsticks and smiled. I guess our campus bell is truly extraordinary. I nodded. That she is. Suddenly, Do 13 shot me a lecherous look and said, Why don't you chase her, Lu Chen? What? I was stunned. Fuck, quit joking, will you? She's way out of my league, and. Ahem. I'm sure we share the same thoughts about myself. Heh, you have to chase her, Lu Chen. Do 13 clenched his fists together and pitched dramatically. Lin Eason is one of the prettiest, if not the prettiest girl in Floating Ice City. If you control her, you control all the beauties in Floating Ice City. If you control the beauties in Floating Ice City, you control all the women in Floating Ice City. If you control the women in Floating Ice City, you control all the men in Floating Ice City. If you control the men, you control the entire internet. If you control the internet, you gulp. Do 13's rambling came to a sudden stop. It looked like he realized that his rant would go off the rails into a dangerous territory if he didn't stop. He then looked at me and smiled again. Anyway, just say it man. Do you like Lin Eason or not? If only I could hit his mute point. Who wouldn't like a pure and beautiful girl like her? I couldn't help but smile when I recalled how cute she looked when I swindled 15 gold off her hands. See that? You see that lecherous smile? Do 13 immediately pointed at me as if he caught me red dot handed. You smile like that, and you say you're not interested in Lin Eason. My honor and dignity were at stake, so I immediately refuted his accusation. How dare you call my warm, spring dot like smile lecherous? If you keep talking nonsense. I'll have you foot tonight's bill. Do 13 immediately stopped talking. I was the one who was keeping him and Gue Guzi fed. The dinner lasted until it was past 10 p.m. Full and satisfied, we took a small break after we returned to our house before getting back into the game in high spirits. Swoosh. When I entered Heaven Blessed, I appeared inside and in at Floating Ice City. Today's goal is very important. I need to catch a pet. Heaven Blessed ruled that only level 30 players and above could own pets, and pets were very important in an MMO. Any common monsters could be captured as a pet, but each had different growth potential. Tamer was a class that was specialized in capturing pets. They could use ceiling cards to capture and tame them. Of course, other classes could use ceiling cards to capture pets as well, but their success rate was only 20% that of tamers. 
it wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that Tamer existed only because of pets. In a sense, it shouldn't even be counted among the ten main combat classes. I didn't know anyone who was a Tamer. Even if I did, there was no way they would capture a pet for me. Humans were naturally selfish, so there was no way a Tamer would give up with a top dot rate pet they captured to someone else. In this case, I had no one but myself to rely on. I stepped out of the hotel and went straight to the magic shop. I planned to buy a ton of ceiling cards. That's right, ceiling cards were mandatory if one desired to capture a pet. After I entered the shop, a beautiful girl wearing a maid outfit walked up to me and smiled. Young adventurer, what is it that you need? I nodded at her and replied, ceiling cards, please. Okay. How many ceiling cards do you need? Each one costs 20 silver. Fuck, it's that expensive. My eyes widened, but there was nothing I could do except pay. I spent 5 gold and bought 25 ceiling cards in total. When I walked out of the magic shop and returned to the streets, I heard a level 30 tamer shouting, I just caught a level 1 green praying mantis with a base number of 17. 3. Star attack, 2. Star agility. Don't miss out on this super pet. If you're level 30, come immediately and claim your precious pet. The price is only 50 gold. I was absolutely stunned by the price. 50 gold. Is he selling his pet or his dad? How ridiculously expensive. There were three rules to follow when taming pets. Firstly, the pet had to be a level 1 mob. Secondly, the player had to use a ceiling card. Thirdly, the player had to be level 30 or above. Out in the wild, the chance for level 1 versions of local monsters to spawn was incredibly low. These monsters could then be captured, although the success rate was pitiful to say the least. If not for these two factors, that tamer wouldn't be asking for 50 gold for such a trash mob. While I was grinding at Wildfire Plains, I actually ran into a level 1 greedy wolf before. Unfortunately, my level was lower than 30 and I had no ceiling cards on me. Instead of rushing off to catch a pet right away, I decided to check their stats first. Tamer had 5 pet slots, but other classes only had one. Thus, I couldn't treat this matter lightly. I opened the official website and looked for the Pitopia. The stats of all the monsters at Floating Ice City entered my view. Green Praying Mantis Attack Defense HP Agility Slime Attack Defense HP Agility Wildfire Greedy Wolf Attack Defense HP Agility Sabertooth Tiger Attack Defense HP Agility Wasp Attack Defense HP Agility Green Praying Mantis was an offensive dot type pet, but it was very slow. Slime was your standard tank with 4.5 dot star HP, Wildfire Greedy Wolf and Sabertooth Tiger were pretty good, but the pet that really caught my eye was the Wasp. It had 4.5 stars in both attack and agility. Its defense and HP weren't that bad either. It was the best choice for both PvP and PvE in the early game. Alright, the Wasp it is. It'll be fun to fly everywhere with a wasp and sting countless baddies to death. I checked the official data for a bit and discovered that wasps were found at the south side of Floating Ice City. Their spawn point was close to Greenstone Mountain Valley, and their level ranged between 35 and 40. Their high level meant that they were out of reach of most casual players, and even players on the heavenly ranking might find it beyond their ability to farm. One just needed to look at its attack star rating to know just how deadly it was. Fortunately for me, I had just obtained the Soul Turmoil Armor and the Beast.Faced Turmoil Helmet. This definitely wasn't an impossible challenge with my new, improved defense. I stocked up on potions and bought another 25 ceiling cards. Then, I took off to capture my first pet. Chapter 43 Venomous Wasp Forest you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator. Aliska wasps could be found at a place called Venomous Wasp Forest on the southern side of Floating Ice City. Venomous Wasp Forest was a scary name, and it didn't take a genius to figure out that wasps there were venomous. 
The reason I chose to capture one as a pet was because of its growth potential, and because a high dot level grinding zone like that would help my level at the same time. About 45 minutes later, I arrived at the edge of Venomous Wasp Forest. I was just about to enter when I heard a voice from inside the forest. Boss, are you sure a level 1 wasp will spawn at this location? Of course. Just keep grinding and be patient. It will show up, okay. I pushed aside the leaves blocking my vision and saw a party of four killing mobs inside the forest. They were all above level 30, and they had undergone their class promotions. Right now in Floating Ice City, the only group strong enough to gather such a powerful party was the Domination Clan. I could see Dominating Heaven Blade standing at the forefront of the party. He swung his sword twice at a level 34 wasp and triggered a violent reaction from the mob. Together, the wasp's head and the wings were about as big as a soccer ball, and it buzzed very loudly when flying through the air. It had a venomous sting at its posterior, and when it attacked, it would curl to sting the enemy below. Dominating Heaven Blade's face immediately turned a shade of poisonous green after being stung. Heal me, priest. Thank you. Dominating Heaven Blade swung his sword two more times and killed the wasp. At the same time, a beam of holy light dropped down on his head and restored half of the HP he had lost immediately. The priest was level 29. He was clearly bred and raised by the Domination Clan. Crack crack. The priest also healed Dominating Warrior God after he killed another wasp. Unlike Dominating Heaven Blade, he couldn't quite solo a wasp yet, so the support was necessary. Have you heard what happened yesterday, boss? Dominating Night God asked. Maybe, what is it? Dominating Heaven Blade asked. Dominating Night God withdrew his spear and said, Yesterday, Mad Dragon gathered nearly a hundred players to defeat the ultimate boss in Greenstone Mountain Valley. However, their raid was destroyed by Wind Fantasy and Broken Halberd sinks into sand together. Amen, I've heard of that. Dominating Heaven Blade smiled. Roaming Dragon is such a clown. He actually believes he can fight us with his pitiful amount of possession. It's almost like he's trying to run himself down. Humph, Wind Fantasy and Broken Halberd sinks into sand got lucky this time. Next time, we'll wreck Mad Dragon ourselves. Dominating Night God frowned a little before asking, Boss, aren't you worried about Wind Fantasy and Broken Halberd sinks into sand at all? Worried. Dominating Heaven Blade couldn't hold back a snort. It's true that Wind Fantasy and Broken Halberd sinks into sand are both insanely talented, but neither of them is a leader fit to become a king. Unlike our guild, Gods of Destruction, their group is weak and powerless. How can they possibly hope to fight against us in a game the size of Heaven Blessed? Our registered members alone number around 2,000. Dominating Night God smiled, glad at his leader's confidence. Your analysis is spot dot on, boss. In this game, there is no hope for lone heroes to rise to power. Still, I wouldn't mind recruiting both of them into our clan, especially Wind Fantasy. TSK TSK, I just realized it last time, but Wind Fantasy is seriously beautiful. Humph, dominating Heaven Blade couldn't help but laugh at his brother. You're good at everything except this, brother. You would have achieved great things already if you weren't so lustful all the time. I avoided the Domination Clan and chose another path. I wasn't afraid of them, but my goal here was to capture a pet. I had no intentions of delaying my objective to engage in a completely pointless activity like PK. I headed to the west side of Venomous Wasp Forest. The forest was quite big, and the wasps there were pretty high dot level. They also spawned in concentrated groups, meaning that I could encounter a wasp for every two meters I traveled. A monster's aggro was triggered when a player came within four yards, so aggro was a delicate task here. I couldn't take action before estimating distance between me and the mob. I carefully aggroed a level 35 wasp toward me. It's three levels higher than me, but I should be able to deal with it. Buzz. The wasp was insanely fast. 
It flew toward me and stung me like lightning. 71. The good news is, I have more than enough defense to endure its attack. I swung the weeping fire blade once and missed my target. Then, I followed up with a lightning fast slash and executed a pardon. Empowered Slayer slash. Poochie. I felt like I was hitting a ball as my blade slammed into the wasp. A huge number popped into the air, 1287. It was a nice amount of damage. The reason it wasn't killed immediately was because it had around 3000 HP. Its level was just too high. I killed my very first wasp a moment later. However, I was forced to chug a health potion to restore my HP, thankfully, regeneration of the undead was an incredible skill. Soon I would reach rank 3, and then it would restore 0.3% of my max HP every second, so it looked like it would restore 1% of my max HP at rank 10. As a result, I would always regain full health in 100 seconds, and don't even get me started on the amount of health potions I would be able to cut down on thanks to it. This skill was absolutely irreplaceable for any undead swordsman. Over two hours passed in the blink of an eye. It was about 1 am, and I had killed countless wasps during this time. However, I still hadn't encountered the legendary level 1 wasp. Beep. It was at this moment I received a message from Wind Fantasy. The pretty girl asked. What are you doing, little cheat? Catching a pet. Oh, I'm working on that as well. What are you trying to catch? A wasp. What about you? A lil red hat, hee hee. What the hell's a lil red hat? You don't know. Nope. Do enlighten me. It'll cost you one gold. A long silence later, Lin Eason gave up expecting a response from me and sent over an entry. Fire blade attack defense HP agility slightly astonished by what I saw, I replied, its attack and HP are amazing. Lin Eason must be snickering to herself right now. Yeah, it'd be nice if I could catch one that has a base number of 70. Yeah, how nice it would be if you run into it and accidentally killed it. How about I kill you, you little cheat? I laughed loudly at her response and closed the chat window. Then, I looked around me and froze up like a statue. It's here. God fucking damn it it's finally here. Just a few steps away in front of me, a wasp with a beautiful number floating above its head flew slowly across the clearing. Wasp LV.1 A level 1 wasp had finally shown up. Overwhelmed by joy, I put away even the weeping fire blade and sneaked toward my target with silent steps. I took out a ceiling card, locked onto the wasp and threw the card at it. Swoosh. The ceiling card suddenly transformed into a giant, magical formation and trapped the little wasp. It then began the taming process. A green progress bar slowly filled up until it stopped suddenly, ding. System notice. Ceiling failed. Process can be repeated four more times. My heart clenched painfully. I only had four chances left. If I failed to capture this wasp by then, it would automatically level up, and all my efforts would have been for nothing. Heavens, please grant me your blessing. Please let me be extraordinarily lucky today. I threw out another ceiling card at the wasp, but the little insect continued to buzz around without a care at all. Fail. I gritted my teeth and tried again. Third times the charm. Fail. Four times the charm. Fail. My resolve was failing as I let out a desperate wail, please don't toy with me like this. I threw out the fifth ceiling card, wrapping the wasp in a six-dot pointed star array. The monster shrank, grew bigger, shrank, and grew bigger again before disappearing in the last moment. A beam of yellow light flew toward me and entered my pet space, taking up my one and only pet slot. I could never obtain another pet unless I released this wasp. Ding. System notice. Congratulations, you have successfully tamed wasp. I hurriedly opened my bag and checked its stats. Wasp level. 1 attack. 5 agility. 
6 Stamina. 3 HP, 5 Growth, Attack Defense HP Agility I calculated briefly in my head and concluded that the total base number of this wasp was 19, the legendary 19. The strength of a pet was determined by two things. Growth scaling and base number, BN, different types of pets had different growth scaling and vice versa, but the BN of a pet was completely random. The higher the pet's BN, the stronger it would become in the future. That was how the term came to be coined. Unfortunately, the wasp I caught only had BN of 19. I didn't know what to think, so I sent Lin Eason a message. E, what's your opinion on a 19 billion wasp? Lin Eason replied, sounds amazing. Raise it. Slightly worried, I asked, amazing how, exactly? Lin Eason sent me a smiley face emoji before replying, I say it's amazing because it'll be so much easier for me to kick your ass if you really decide to raise such a shitty pet. Fuck. I turned off the chat window. Damn it, this wasp is complete trash. What should I do? I had invested too much effort to toss it without a thought, but if I truly wanted to become a super pro then raising a trash like this was completely out of the question. As Lin Eason had warned me earlier, it would be easy for her to destroy me if I chose to stick with a pet like this. In Heaven Blessed, a player could obtain their first pet after reaching level 30. Once they reached the next level threshold, they would be able to unlock their second pet slot. If I wasn't mistaken, a player could have only up to three pets at the most, but only one could be active at any given time. If a pet died, it couldn't be resummoned for 10 minutes. Long story short, Demand for high.bn pets was greater now than it would be in the future. Meanwhile, the wasp I caught flapped its wings and flew in circles in front of me. The little thing looked like it was incredibly happy. Troubled, I was just about to leave when a voice came from my right side. Fuck. He caught a level 1 wasp. I turned around and saw none other than dominating night god and dominating warrior god. The way they stared at my pet greedily reminded me of the story Dong Zhua and Diao Chan. 1. Legend states that Diao Chan was one of the four beauties of ancient China who had a romance with the warrior Lu Bu and thus caused him to betray and kill his foster father, the tyrannical warlord Dong Zhua. Chapter 44 Queen Wasp Nest You are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Alisku The spawn rate of a level 1 monster wasn't high at all. At the very least, dominating Heaven Blade and his group hadn't encountered a single level 1 wasp up until now. That was why dominating Night God and dominating Warrior God approached me with their weapons at the ready when they noticed that I had already sealed a wasp. Unafraid, I stared at the duo and smiled suddenly. What is your business with me, heroes? Surprised, dominating Night God returned a smile and asked, It's nothing. So, you've caught a pet, broken halberd sinks into sand. Emin, I turned around to caress my little wasp on the head before saying, TSK TSK, a wasp has 4.5 stars in both attack and agility. It truly is the perfect offensive pet, don't you agree? Plus, my wasp has 35 billion, huh, it's great isn't it? Envy immediately died dominating night god's eyes green. 35 billion. That's. That's crazy. Dominating warrior god walked closer with his sword and sneered. Say, friend, are you interested in selling this wasp? I shook my head without hesitation. Of course not. I need it myself. Is that so? The trace of an evil grin flashed across dominating warrior god's face. I'm willing to buy it for five gold. Is this really not negotiable? Just treat this as the beginning of our friendship and a favor to the Domination Clan and the Gods of Destruction Guild. I shook my head again. No way. A wasp with 35 billion is worth at least 50 gold on the market. Do you think I'm stupid? In that case, we won't go easy on you any longer. Dominating warrior god pulled out his sword and sneered at me. You can trade us the wasp now, or be killed seven to eight times at minimum. 
the Domination Clan doesn't mind camping your corpse for a couple of days, we promise hee hee. I couldn't help but laugh. It barely took any effort to bait out their true nature. It was at this moment dominating Heaven Blade appeared with two archers and a priest. He yelled, Warrior God, what are you doing? I told you Broken Halberd sinks into sand is our friend. Dominating Warrior God made up his mind and whispered, Boss, he caught a wasp with 35 billion. It's crazy good. Ah. A multitude of expressions flitted across Dominating Heaven Blade's face for a moment. Clearly, he was struggling to choose between me, his friend, and the wasp with 35 billion. Sadly, I wasn't as attractive as my own wasp. Dominating Heaven Blade tightened his grip around his blade and smiled. Brother, I can give you 50 gold for that wasp. Do you agree? I replied frankly, if I don't agree, you'll camp my corpse and wipe my ID from Floating Ice City's heavenly ranking, won't you? Huh, well. That he didn't continue was by itself a tacit admission already. Beside him, dominating Night God said, There's no need to hesitate, boss. Let's kill him just like Hot Sun two days ago. Humph, top 10 pro my ass. Let's see if he can climb back to top 10 after I camp him for the entire day. I didn't expect this. Thanks to him. I abruptly recalled that Su Yang had vanished suddenly from the heavenly ranking two days ago. So they were the culprits behind this. Hot Sunday. He offended you. I asked. Dominating Night God sneered, Hot Sun, ha. Not only is he suicidal, he doesn't know how to appreciate kindness at all. He refused to abandon his old guild, something something ancient sword dreaming souls and join gods of destruction. What's so good about that third dot rate guild anyway? Humph, those who cannot adapt to the times can only be crushed beneath it. My eyes turned bloody red, my head overwhelmed with anger, my rage burning. I long to return to ancient sword dreaming souls and he even in my dreams. No way in hell I'd allow anyone to blaspheme them. Russell Russell I disappeared from where I stood and appeared in front of dominating Night God in an instant. Injecting undead energy into the weeping fire blade, I launched one basic attack each at his chest and his neck. For 12, 447. Both strikes were targeted at his weak points, so dominating Night God died with his eyes open. The possibility that I might attack him despite the number disadvantage never entered his mind until it was too late. I slowly pulled out the blood dot drenched blade from dominating night god's body before saying, Ancient sword dreaming souls is not a third dot rate guild. Die. Thump. Dominating heaven blade and the rest of the domination clan clan members realized what I did only when dominating night god's body had collapsed to the ground. Furious, dominating warrior god charged me while yelling, Rat, how dare you hurt my brother. Whoosh. Dominating warrior god leaped into the air and executed the skill, Assault. It was the signature skill of level 30 warrior boasting great attack power and a chance to stun a target for one second. I looked up at my airborne opponent, a smile flashing across my face. I circled to his back perfectly, dodging out of his attack range and slashing him twice at the same time. The first strike was Pardon, and the second strike was Slayer Slash. There wasn't even half a second of delay between the two strikes. Miss. 1097, dominating warrior god could hardly believe how easily he had been killed by me. Thump. Another body collapsed to the ground. I had killed two heavenly ranking pros in the blink of an eye. However, I felt pain beneath my armpit and my back. I was shocked to discover that more than half of my HP was gone. Beep. Combat Log Player, Dominating Heaven Blade, used Sword Drag Slash, dealing 279 damage. Beep Combat Log Player, Dominating Heaven Blade, used Double Slash, dealing 189 and 201 damage. The situation was bad. Dominating Heaven Blade was definitely a top-dot-rate warrior, 
and not even my dark steel grade metal armor could protect me from his powerful attacks. What was even worse was that dominating archer god just fired Devil Piercing Arrow at me. Devil Piercing Arrow was the signature second dot promotion skill of the archer class, and it ignored 50% of the target's armor. It was a killer move against defense dot heavy class like warrior. I backed away quickly and downed a rank 2 health potion, recovering 400 HP in an instant. Thank you, Lin Eason, I would have died if I didn't have this. Bang. The devil piercing arrow struck my chest and exploded for 227 HP. This archer had completely broken through my defense. The four enemy players charged toward me to secure the kill, the deadliest among them being dominating Heaven Blade of course. As expected from the number one player on the heavenly ranking, his offensive power was no joke at all. Outnumbered, I would lose if I tried to beat them fair and square. Fighting and retreating, I downed another HP pot and rolled into the trees behind me, hoping to find an opportunity to use Earth Escape to slip underground. But not only did the skill have a 1. second cast time, my own brain was still delayed by about half a second. If I couldn't find a way to stall them for 1.5 second, this battle would probably end badly for me. Dominating Heaven Blade chased me and shouted, Broken Halberd sinks into sand, is this how you repay the kindness I've shown you? I will make you pay for killing my brothers. I snorted and checked the cooldown on pardon. 45 seconds gone, 15 more to go. Humph, just watch me drag you down from your throne when these 15 seconds are up, dominating Heaven Blade. I zigzagged non dot stop to avoid dominating Archer God's attacks. Heaven Blessed was a full virtual reality game, so there was no lock dot on system when shooting. People couldn't just get the target lock and spam skills. Now, the player had to at least aim near the target to hit. After all, it would look ridiculous to shoot in another direction just for the arrow to magically curve to hit the target behind you. Thanks to my movement, at least half of dominating archer god's shots hit nothing but trees. Moreover, thanks to my amazing defense, his devil-piercing arrow was the only attack that I needed to be wary of. Although dominating Heaven Blade was a top dot class player, my movement dizzied him and nearly caused him to run into a tree several times. His movement and control might seem extraordinary compared to a normal player, but his fluidity still had room for improvement. He was definitely just a bit inferior to Lin Eason. Pardon was almost done refreshing. My eyes almost never left the countdown. It's off cooldown. I instantly ran an S across the terrain before turning around. Then, I swung the weeping fire blade twice at dominating Heaven Blade. He never had a chance to evade my pardon plus slayer slash combo. Whoosh. Dominating Heaven Blade summoned a powerful wind around himself. The protective barrier around him seemed to work similarly to my ghost deity armor. Unfortunately for him, it wasn't enough to withstand the divine punishment that came after pardon. Miss. 987, dominating Heaven Blade's breath left his lips. Warriors didn't have the highest HP scaling to begin with, and dominating Heaven Blade only had slightly over 600 HP. How could he possibly withstand my attack? Thump. Just like that, the boss of the Domination Clan and the leader of Gods of Destruction had died in my hands. I was angry because of dominating Warrior God's words, because he said that Ancient Sword Dreaming Souls was a third dot rate guild. To me, it was a name that deserved to be protected with my life. I would never allow anyone to trash talk it, even if I had to give my life for it. In reality, my situation was absolutely critical. Although I managed to kill Dominating Heaven Blade, the counterattack also gave the archer the opening he needed to shoot me. Dominating Archer God's Devil Piercing Arrow hit me with incredible force. Bang! 291 I downed another rank 2 health potion the second I was hit. However, the shot knocked me into the air and sent me free dot falling like a broken kite. Swoosh. Shock gripped me as my vision turned black. I didn't realize that there was a giant pit behind the bush I had been standing in. Bang. 
I fell all the way to the bottom of the pit. When I looked up, I could barely see a sliver of light above me. This pit has to be a hundred meters deep at least. So, did we do it, someone asked. Dominating Archer God said, I think so. He probably died from the fall damage. Let's head back and report our success to the boss. Okay. Damn this kid is fierce. He was fighting us alone, but it didn't look like he was using his full strength. Hmph. What a shame that we couldn't make use of a top dot class pro like him. Pro my ass. He still fell to my arrow in the end, didn't he? Huh, you're definitely the reincarnation of Huang Zhong, brother. Dot. Not long after, the two players lingering above the pit went away to report to dominating Heaven Blade. As for me, I was busy looking around me and coming to the realization that this pit wasn't as simple as I thought. The rocks on the walls looked completely natural, but I noticed that they were riddled with tiny holes. It almost looked like the pattern of a hive. I felt chilled from the bottom of my heart. This is the venomous wasp forest, so can this place really be a hive? I checked the map and felt even colder. The location was Queen Wasp Nest. 1. Military general serving under the warlord Liu Bei during the late Eastern Han Dynasty of China. Chapter 45 Dark Wasp, you are listening at novel full. Audio. Translator Alisku A Zone Within a Zone. I was overjoyed. My first thought was that I had entered a boss lair. Queen Wasp Nest. This dark and eerie place must be where the Queen Wasp lived. I looked up again, and just like before I saw only a small dot of light shining down from above. This pit was incredibly deep, and it was concealed by the forest. I guess I should thank the Domination Clan for attacking me, because there was no way I would have found this place otherwise. I was regenerating health automatically when I heard a ring. Ding. System Notice. Congratulations, your skill, Regeneration of the Undead, has reached rank 3. Nice. The skill automatically took effect whenever I wasn't at max health, so it reached rank 3 faster than I thought. Now, the skill regenerated 0.3% HP every second. Since my total HP was 750, I was regenerating 2.25 HP every second. Now I feel like a proper undead. Clearly, super regeneration was one of my class's natural advantages. I tightened my grip around my blade after regenerating to full health and walked deeper into the queen wasp nest. The walls were completely covered in holes, and I could even see wriggling pupae inside of them. It was a terrifying sight. When these pupae reached full maturity, they would transform into wasps and hunt noobs at venomous wasp forest. Who would have thought that I would accidentally fall into their nest? Buzz buzz buzz. Suddenly, I heard a familiar sound in front of me. Here they come. Two patrolling wasps flew toward me at the same time. I was surprised to find that they were different from the wasps I had fought outside. Their heads were round and covered in venomous thorns, giving them the appearance of a fierce tiger. In fact, they were called Tiger Head Hornets, an incredible level 37 wasp. I gripped my blade and charged them without hesitation. The first attack belongs to me. I swung my sword once and missed beautifully. Then, I followed up with a devastating rank 3 Slayer Slash. 1489, seriously. That attack didn't even delete half of the Tiger Head Hornet's HP. This level 37 monster is just too powerful. Swoosh swoosh. The two tiger head hornets screeched in unison before attacking me, sending a wave of burning sensation across my chest. I lost a huge amount of HP, and I was poisoned by the attack. 189, 197. This is bad. I need to end this as quickly as possible. Bloody light wrapped around the weeping fire blade. Undead Energy 3 gave me 15% damage bonus to living targets, and the bloody ring of protection on my finger gave me another 3% boost. 
I struck the enemy three times, each stroke of my sword dealing more than 400 damage. 447, 459. 451, the Tiger Head Hornet had around 3000 HP, and I was able to drop it to low health with a series of devastating blows. However, it was able to launch one last attack and chip away 200 of my HP. Glug. Left with no choice, I drank a rank 2 health potion and regained 400 HP immediately. A normal health potion was completely insufficient in this situation. Lin Isin and Clear Perfume Potion. Making skills were really starting to display their usefulness, and I resolved myself to maintain an excellent business relationship with them. Swoosh. I slashed one more time and killed my first Tiger Head Hornet. Now that there was only one enemy left, my life was no longer in danger. With my rank 2 health potions, normal health potions from NPC vendors and regeneration of the undead, I could probably kill the last tiger head hornet without dropping below 75% health. Crack. The second tiger head hornet let out a bloodcurdling screech before dying under my blade. It even dropped a 91 quality big magic stone. Nice, that's another 18 silver in my wallet. I checked my experience bar. Level 32, 97% full. Those two kills actually boosted my experience by a whopping 3%. It was an incredible feeling, and it looked like I could level up once or twice in this queen wasp nest. Of course, I would rather fight a boss and kill it. After all, the experience and items a boss gave were nothing like that of a common mob. Happy, I continued onward and quickly encountered the second group of tiger head hornets. Just like before they came at me as a pair, and I was able to beat them at the cost of one rank 2 health potion. Moreover, I got yet another 88 quality big magic stone or 17.6 silver, just had to multiply the quality by 2. Currently, 1 gold was worth 100 renminbi, so this magic stone was worth 17 renminbi and 60 cents. I could buy a dish of fish. Flavored shredded pork with this money. I trekked through the dark and silent passages of the queen wasp nest for over an hour, killing countless tiger head hornets in the process. I was now at level 33 and 25% experience, and the placements on the heavenly ranking had changed yet again. After dominating Heaven Blade was killed by me, Lin Eason had successfully reclaimed her throne. Name level class Wind Fantasy 35 Light Wanderer Broken Halberd sinks into sand 33 Undead Swordsman Dominating Heaven Blade 32 Warrior in Constant 31 Magic Knight Iron Pardon 31 Warrior Dominating Knight God 31 Magic Knight Dominating Mage God 31 Mage Dominating Warrior God 31 Warrior Dominating Archer God 30 Archer Clear Perfume 30 Archer For now, I sat at second place. I wondered where Lin Eason grinded to increase her level this quickly. Did she hunt yet another boss? I thought about it for a moment before relaxing. Levels didn't represent a player's full strength. Suddenly, a beep entered my ears. Lin Eason had sent me a message. Hee hee, what are you doing, little cheat? Catching wasps, duh, I replied back sourly. I'm going to show you something good. Make sure you keep it a secret, sure, what is it? A pet entry entered my message box right after. It was the stats of Lin Eason's pet. Fire blade level. 1 attack. 10 defense. 7 HP, 10 agility. 7 Noel.N growth, attack defense HP agility I was completely stunned. This. This fire blade is a bit much, isn't it? For each stat, the maximum base a pet could start with was 20, meaning that the perfect pet could have up to 80 billion. This fire blade had BN of 34, which was over twice the current average BN, 15. What was this nonsense? Absolutely green with envy, I replied, why did you send me this? What are you trying to do? Lin Eason was probably laughing her head off. To make you unhappy, of course. Hee <laughs> hee, I'm happy if you're unhappy. Fuck. I closed the chat window and resolved not to speak with her anymore. Any more than this and I'll die on my feet. Still, 
it looks like that fifteen gold I swindled from Lin Eason left quite the scar on her heart. Take that, you lucky witch. Ha <laughs> ha. After the brief conversation, I went back to leveling and trekked deeper into the queen wasp nest. It wasn't long before I ran into a new kind of bee. This one had transparent, gold wings and a cyan body. Its sting was openly displayed and dripping with chilling venom. It was as big as a basketball, and I could already imagine how painful it would be to be stung by it. Killer B Level 39 Attack Defense HP Unfortunately, I couldn't see its stats because my level was too low, but it wasn't like I had another choice besides defeating it. This was a death trap I had fallen into, and the only way to escape it was to defeat every enemy that was standing in my way. Crack. I hit the killer bee's cyan head hard with a pardon slayer slash. A huge damage number popped into the air, 1578. After leveling up, I gained another 5 attack. It looks like my damage has gone up again. The killer bee had about 3300 HP, meaning that the attack had taken away about 50% of its HP. It only managed to retaliate once before I landed a couple more basic attacks and killed it, meaning that I didn't even have to use a rank 2 health potion. Well, that definitely saved me a lot of money. I checked my experience bar and saw an encouraging boost. The experience dropped by a level 39 monster was massive, and there was nothing more exhilarating than leveling up rapidly. A lot of players must be hunting level 20 bears in Frost Forest right now, and here am I hunting level 39 killer bees in a boss zone. I'm so happy I continued forward and got a 99 quality big magic stone on my fourth killer bee kill. My luck is absolutely off the charts today. These magic stones alone should earn me a lot of money. It was at this moment I received a message from Gue Guzi. Boss, I want to consult with you about something. Sure, speak. A small group from the Domination Clan, three players to be exact, hired me and Brother B to kill a level 27 boss. We had agreed to share the kill experience. But now that the boss is low on health, they want to kick us out of the party and claim all the experience for themselves. What should we do? I smiled and replied, they're the ones who broke the rules first. Did you save a record of the dialogue? Yes. Good. Leave the party when the boss is about to die. Then kill it, take the experience and don't leave behind a single item drop. We can afford to lose the commission fee. Great, that's exactly what I was hoping to do. Your approval makes it even better. I slammed my blade into the killer bee in front of me and smiled. From the moment I created bloody mercenaries, I swore that I wouldn't allow my people to suffer by the hands of others. There was a saying, wolves eat meat, dogs eat shit, and we, the bloody mercenaries, were a wolf pack made of iron and blood. No one could snatch the meat in our jaws. Over three hours and countless dead killer bees later, my experience was 75% full, still level 33. I had been grinding in this queen wasp nest for almost five hours, and I had finally reached the end of the map. The world in front of me abruptly widened, and I discovered that I had entered a wide temple. Even the background music became intense and exciting. This is clearly the boss's chamber. Excited, I clenched my blade tighter and entered the temple. No matter how powerful the queen wasp is, I swear to slay it even it costs me thirteenths humanity. However, my oath was thrown to the back of my mind when I rounded a corner and saw the boss. A dark cyan wasp about 40 centimeters long was flying inside the temple. It had transparent wings that looked as tough as steel, and its body was covered in a layer of thin shell. It emanated a dark light, and the sting protruding from its posterior was shaped like a sharp blade. It looked terrifying to say the least. Dark Wasp, B Rank Boss, Introduction Dark wasps are a rare breed in this continent. A long time ago, it was prophesied to be the favored species of the gods. With its super attack and defense, a fully dot matured dark wasp is brutal and bloodthirsty. 
For the adventurers of heaven blessed, the creature is the manifestation of the grim reaper. Rank B boss, super attack and defense. I couldn't care less. Why? It was because my attention was completely pulled to the line of text hovering above its head, Dark Wasp LV.1. Chapter 46 Super Dark Wasp You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Aliska Buzz My mind turned completely blank. How? How is this boss level 1? I had no idea that such a thing existed in Heaven Blessed. Does this mean it can be captured as a pet just like any other monster? If my assumption is correct, this dark wasp has to be incredibly powerful. I kept my emotions under control and held my breath. Dark wasp. A level 1 dark wasp. The revelation kept resonating inside my head. The first step was to release the 19 billion trash wasp I had captured earlier. Swoosh. I took out a ceiling card and clenched my teeth. A level 1 boss was pretty weak, so I wasn't worried about my own safety. However, I was worried that the boss would become level 2 after 5 failed attempts. The capture rate of a level 1 boss must be ridiculously low, and I was not a tamer with increased ceiling rate. If I failed to capture this dark wasp, I would probably remember this failure for life. For a time, I felt like I was standing at the center of a single dot log bridge, the slightest movement was a source of trepidation for me. That being said, it wasn't like I had any other choice. The only thing to do here was to act bravely and hope for the best. Swoosh. I tossed the ceiling card into the air, watching it as it flew above the dark wasp's head and transformed into a cyan formation. It grew smaller and smaller as it pulled the dark wasp toward it with a mysterious power. A progress bar showed how long it would take for the sealing process to complete, and I felt like my heart was threatening to leap out of my chest. Thankfully, the system didn't make me wait long and dinged in less than two seconds. System notice. Sealing failed. Process can be repeated 14 more times. I was a bit surprised by the system notice. 14 times. As I thought, things were different when a boss was involved. My success chance should be much higher than the last time. I took out another ceiling card and repeated the process. I had plenty of ceiling cards in stock, so I wasn't worried about running out and wasting this golden opportunity. Some tamers were so stingy that they only carried 10 ceiling cards when out hunting. It was a decision they would regret deeply if they ran into a level 1 boss like me. Swoosh. The ceiling card flew into the air and circled around the dark wasp's head again. Ding. System notice. Ceiling failed. Process can be repeated 13 more times. God damn it, another failure. Again. Meanwhile, the dark wasp flew around the temple and did its own thing. It was completely oblivious to the malicious undead creature that was throwing ceiling cards at it again and again. I felt like my heart was breaking down bit by bit as the system bell rang beside my ears again and again. Ding. System notice. Ceiling failed. Process can be repeated 12 more times. Ding. System notice. Ceiling failed. Process can be repeated 11 more times. Ding. System notice. Ceiling failed. Process can be repeated 10 more times. Ding. System notice. Ceiling failed. Process can be repeated one more time. 14 chances had slipped through my fingers in the blink of an eye. It was do or die. Tears streaming down my cheeks, I kissed the ceiling card and murmured to myself, hee hee. Boss. Please give me strength. Swoosh. The ceiling card transformed into a hexagramic formation one last time and enveloped the dark wasp, shrinking and pulling it unto itself slowly. However, the wasp cried out and escaped the pull temporarily, only to be pulled back into the formation once more. The process repeated itself another four times before the dark wasp vanished into the magic formation once and for all. Ding. 
System Notice. Congratulations, you have successfully tamed Dark Wasp, boss. Shock, joy, ecstasy. No words could describe what I was feeling at that moment. If I had to try, I would say that it was like chasing girl you loved for many years, and she walked up to you one day and say, Dummy, I've loved you since a long time ago. I checked my pet space and saw the dark wasp. When I summoned it and checked its stats, my heartbeat nearly came to a stop. Dark wasp LV.1 attack. 18 defense. 15 HP, 17 agility. 19 growth, attack defense HP agility my mind went blank again. 6. Star attack. 5.5. Star agility. Holy shit this dark wasp is dope as fuck. And would you look at that beautiful BN, 69. It's way better than Lin Eason's fire blade. I was absolutely overjoyed. Not only was this dark wasp a boss creature with amazing growth, its BN was absolutely amazing. I must have used up all the good luck and karma I had collected in the past 24 years of my life. I brought up the friend list and noticed that Wind Fantasy was still online. So I sent her a message that said, Beauty Lin, you wanna see something good? A few seconds later, Lin Eason replied, What is it? Send it over. Okay. I made a pet entry of the Dark Wasp and sent it to Lin Eason directly. It took her five full minutes before she finally replied, Lu Chen, I feel like murdering someone. I laughed like a madman while replying, Mwahahaha, fight me, bite me. Lin Eason. Eh eh eh. Clearly, Beauty Lin had gone completely berserk. Feeling very pleased with myself, I decided to depart for Floating Ice City. There was nothing to grab inside the temple, and I needed to level up my pet as soon as possible. No matter how OP it was, there was nothing it could do at level 1. Once it caught up to my level, both leveling and piking would become a lot easier. I crushed a return scroll and teleported back to Floating Ice City. It was overflowing with people even during the night. I checked my satiety and noted that it had dipped below 40. It was time to fill up my stomach. I walked out of Floating Ice City and ran straight for Frost Mound. Many days had passed inside the game, and I wondered how my little Loli was doing. On the way, I cut down any enemies or obstacles standing in my path and named my pet, Wind Fantasy. It was perfect. I couldn't wait to see Lin Eason's reaction. I set the Dark Wasp to follow me and stay out of combat. By the time we reached Frost Mound, my Dark Wasp had reached level 11 and grown a lot more powerful. Dark Wasp Level 11 Attack 128 Defense 85 HP, 317 agility. 169 At first glance, it seemed that my Dark Wasp gained 10 attack, 7 defense, 30 HP, and 15 agility at every level. That's impressive. Its stats will be far superior to mine once it reaches level 33. That being said, we players had the ability to equip items and increase our stats. Moreover, a pet's stats grew at a fixed rate. If I was wearing a set of top dot rate armor, I could one dot shot my dark wasp even if it shared the same level as me. First thing upon arrival at Frost Mound, I sought out my trainer, the undead swordsman Surin. The huge skeleton stared at me and smiled. Young undead, your growth speed is truly amazing. I'm glad, your addition will bolster our ranks and give us more strength to fight against the invading humans and evil night creatures. He then waved his hand and said, a pack of heartless hell wind wolves has appeared in the forest to the north of Frost Mound. They are so vicious that they devour humans and undead alike. I want you to punish them for what they've done to us, young undead. Kill 400 hell wind wolves and bring back 100 hell wind wolf teeth. Ding. System notice. Do you accept the quest, hell wind wolf? I chose, accept. Ding. System notice. You've accepted the quest, Hell Wind Wolf. Quest rank. D. Description. 
Go north of Frost Mound and enter Immortal Trail Forest. Kill 400 Hell Windwolves Collect 100 Hell Windwolf Teeth. Bring them back to the undead swordsman trainer Surin for a very generous reward. It's time to kill some Hell Windwolves. I set out after repairing my equipment and stocking up on potions. But before I headed to Immortal Trail Forest, I stopped at Mushroom Forest to check on Shinran. She wore a blue dress today, and she was picking mushrooms and putting them into her basket. No matter the season, I could almost always find her at this location. Shinran ran up to me excitedly when she spotted me and smiled. You're finally here, big brother. You've been gone for so long that I thought you vanished somewhere. I smiled at her and replied, of course not. Shinran took out an oat bread and gave it to me, smiling. Here, your meal. I accepted the gift and ate it on the spot, but I discovered that my satiety had only gone up by 50 points. It looked like my appetite had increased along with my level. I passed Shinran a big magic stone and told her to take good care of herself. She was very happy. We chatted for a while, but she left shortly after because she knew that I was busy. After bidding Shinran goodbye, I made way toward Immortal Trail Forest alone. Immortal Trail Forest was a quiet and tranquil forest situated right next to Frost Forest. Legend says that angels once descended on this forest, which was how it got its name in the first place. However, it had been many years since a deity or an angel was sighted. With no one from above to protect them, the people of this land could only fight back against the night creature's invasion with their own hands. I am neither a night creature nor a human that I'm a neutral undead who is slowly growing into a powerful undead swordsman. Immortal Trail Forest looked like it was rarely visited, if at all. The weeping fire blade glowed slightly as I trekked through the trees. I paid close attention to both sides of the forest trail I was following because I couldn't shake off the feeling that something was following me. It was late in the night, and the wind was strong and frigid, as evident from the shaking leaves and branches beside the road. I opened the map and noticed that the zone in front of me was all red. I must be pretty close to the Hell Windwolf spawn zone. I sucked in a deep breath and entered the forest. The moment I took a step, a terrible stench suddenly overwhelmed my senses right before a huge, snow dot colored wolf pounced toward me. Its mouth was full of saliva, and its teeth shone coldly under the sky. Poochie. Caught off dot guard, it bit me for 287 HP before I could do anything. This Hell Wind Wolf's attack is pretty high. I turned around and unleashed my own devastating attack. My first attack, pardon, missed completely, as usual, and I followed it up with an enhanced Slayer Slash. 1754, the damage number appearing above its head was more than encouraging. Not only did the Hell Wind Wolf scream in pain, my attack was so powerful that it was sent flying into the air. The attack took half of its HP away. Chapter 47 Windwolf Grieves You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Aliska charging forward, I unleashed three basic attacks upon the wolf. The first blow was a thrust, the second a crush, and the third a slash. The three sword techniques were smoothly connected, each attacking different weak point of the Hell Windwolf. I managed to prevent it from unleashing any counterattack. I was overjoyed inside. It felt easy to move and maneuver now. My delay had clearly shortened to about half a second. This was the intuition of a game expert. When the weapon in your hand was matched with great skill, unimaginable feats were within grasp. In reality, I was a complete newbie, but in terms of swordsmanship in the game, I was definitely at the top. Speaking of which, I was just a person who only talked on paper. ARR, ARR. The wolf howled as it fell to the flow, turning into abundant experience and a corpse. I walked forward and looked carefully. A level 38 hell wind wolf. Such a high level. No wonder it gave me such pain with its attacks. Right now, I wore the cyan fire cloak the soul turmoil armor and the beast.faced turmoil helmet. 
my equipment was extremely fine. Even so, the Hell Wind Wolf had taken nearly 300 HP from me with a bite. If this was any ordinary player, they would probably have been bitten to death. I reached out with my fingers and shouted at the wolf. Death plunder. Whoosh. After a bolt of light, an exquisite white wolf skin appeared in my hand. This was the fur of the Hell Wind Wolf, unusually snowy white, and definitely top material for making high dot class pelt items such as Gucci and LV. Of course, it wasn't possible to do such business in the game, but tailors could still turn this into good leather armor. Hell Wind Wolf Pelt, Quality 81, Rank 3 Leather, can be used to make leather armor. As expected, this pelt was a Rank 3 material. Another Windfall TSK TSK, the Death Plunder skill looked useless, but was definitely my trump skill for making money in early stages. Especially when I was fighting wild beast monsters. This skill was a sure dot fire way to get their skins and sinews. I put away the wolf hide and continued forward. Above my shoulder, the dark wasp had suddenly jumped to level 11 15% experience after hogging a large amount of the hell wind wolf's experience. If I spend the night killing the wolves here, the dark wasp will reach at least level 20 and be a worthy addition in my fights. At that time, my combat strength will soar. I raised my hand and shouted, Rise, undead. Crash. The hell wind wolf's plundered corpse suddenly trembled. Soon, the bones broke out, and a skeleton wind wolf half the height of a man appeared. Hell wind wolf, demonic servant, level. 30 attack. 152-25 defense. 150 HP, 1000. I was slightly surprised. As expected, Summon Undead was extremely strong after reaching rank 3. The demonic servant that I summoned was level 30, and its attack power was very good, only slightly lower than mine. On the other hand, its defense and HP were both higher. This was definitely a good offensive meat shield. Huh, let's go, fantasy, wind wolf. I took the dark wasp and the skeleton wolf as I advanced. This time, I was confident. With my team of pets, even if I encounter two hell wind wolves, I can manage. I couldn't finish this thought before two hell wind wolves pounced at me. I immediately sent the skeleton wolf at one to tank it with Dark Wasp as support while I took another on my own. Pardon. Slayer Slash. Whoosh whoosh whoosh. After cleanly defeating the first wolf within five strikes, I turned around and smiled. The skeleton wolf was still grappling with its living brethren while the Dark Wasp danced in the air. It suddenly dived, the stinger on its tail stabbing into the wind wolf's neck and dragging upwards. Poochie. 117, TSK TSK, its attack power is considerable. My confidence soared as I realized my palpable growth. I went up and defeated the second Hell Wind Wolf with two blows. After using Death Plunder, another two skins appeared in my inventory. I looked at my demonic servant. Its HP was about done. Therefore, I released it and summoned again. Another impressive skeleton wolf rose from the dead. However, it was extremely taxing on my MP. Each summon undead came with 50 MP cost. It required more magic than mages used. Fortunately, I had taken along several bundles of green pepper meatball, so I could replenish my mana as needed. In any case, I didn't need to be frugal with my own crafts. As a result, my grind became very smooth. The immortal trail forest was almost overrun by hell wind wolves. They were everywhere, and I was casually killing them. The hell wind wolves were rich in experience, and even their drop rate was nice. I was getting a magic stone every ten wolves. With my level advantage, I could make a killing just selling these stones. The bloody mercenaries already had three loyal members. We were like dot minded and united. But what did we lack? Money. If we couldn't get enough money, the three founders of bloody mercenaries would starve to death. 
I leveled up alone and bored. As the pillar of light descended, Dark Wasp's level also increased. In the blink of an eye, more than four hours had passed. I was completely covered in sweat. I had already gotten the required number of teeth and killed the required number of enemies but I still continued in order to get more skins. Today, I was determined to not return to Frost Mound until I reached level 35. Just as I was in my killing trance, a message came, ding. System notice. Player, Morong Mingyue has sent you a friend request. Do you accept? I stilled. Did Morong Mingyue recognize me? Or did something happen? I looked at the time. It was nine in the morning. Sister Mingyue should have just gotten online. Why had she sought me out? After a moment of thought, I accepted. If I refused, Morong Mingyue would definitely suspect something with her intelligence. Beep. She sent a message. Broken halberd sinks into sand, may I ask you something? Yes. Are you falling dust? No. Oh. Anything else? Yes. Morong Mingyue continued, I heard that you and Gue Guzi have created a mercenary workshop. A friend and I have accepted a quest to kill a level 32 boss. If it's not a bother. Could you help us? We can discuss the fee. What do you think about 10 gold? I immediately responded, a level 32 boss. No problem. Just wait by the eastern gate bridge of Floating Ice City. I will immediately come with others. All right. I patted my chest and quieted my fiercely dot beating heart. Murong Mingyue and Su Yang must have gotten a quest. This time, I definitely could not show any flaws. Otherwise, if he found me, with my ghastly state both in reality and in the game, how could I meet her? I had already decided that I would not return to ancient sword dreaming souls in this life. I would use the name of bloody mercenaries to protect them. Like a shadow, I would hide in the darkness to protect Ee and our dream before slowly dissipating. That way, I wouldn't hurt them again, and hopefully I would have paved their way by then. Crack. My sword deflected paws of the enemy wolf, cleanly cutting its head off afterward. L.C. Swoosh. I successfully reached third place. The first name was Lin Eason and the second was Dominating Heaven Blade who I had killed. This guy definitely had someone helping him level up. His leveling speed was as fast as the wind. I sprinted back to Frost Mound and found Trainer Surin to hand in the quest items. Surin immediately laughed and said, Good job, little skeleton, your strength is one people have taken notice of. Come, this is your reward. Ding. System notice. Congratulations, you have completed the quest, Hell Wind Wolf. You have gained 7200 EXP, 120 reputation, and quest reward. Wind Wolf grieves. Wind Wolf grieves. I was overjoyed. Surin was so good. I had been killing Hell Wind Wolves for four hours, and had gathered more than 400 skins, but not a single piece of equipment dropped. I hadn't expected to be lucky and obtain a piece of equipment when I was handing in my quest. I opened the bag. A pair of dark blue greaves lay quietly in the corner, Wind Wolf Greaves, Steel. Grade, Defense. 32 Agility. Plus 7 level requirement. 35. It is actually steel. Grade, surprising. It added an impressive 32 defense and 7 agility. While it didn't increase my strength or stamina that I needed the most, agility was not bad. Sufficient agility would strengthen a player in individual battles too. I put on the Windwolf Greaves and took off the bearskin greaves I had put on earlier. My defense soared by 25, all the way to 165. This level of defense was extraordinary at the present stage. I looked at my equipment. Very good, very sharp. I could show myself in public, ID, Broken Halbert sinks into sand class. Undead swordsman, bronze swordsman, level. 
35 HP, 780 attack. 149 273 defense. 165 magic resist. 0 reputation. 514 luck. 0 weeping fire blade, bronze dot grade, attack. 25 40 strength. Plus 8 level requirement. 25 beast dot faced turmoil helmet, steel dot grade, defense. 28 strength. Plus 7 level requirement. 30 soul turmoil armor, dark steel grade, defense. 48 stamina. Plus 11 passive. Increases the user's physical attack power by 2% level requirement. 32 Cyan Fire Cloak, Bronze Dot Grade, Defense. 22 Stamina. Plus 7 Passive. Increases the user's evasion rate by 0.5% level requirement. 25 Black Bracers, Iron Dot Grade Metal Armor, Defense. 8 Strength. Plus 2 Level Requirement. 10 Porcupine Boots, Iron Dot Grade, Defense. 12 Stamina. Plus 3 level requirement. 10 Windwolf Greaves, Steel dot grade, defense. 32 Agility. Plus 7 level requirement. 35 Bloody Ring of Protection, Dark Steel grade, strength. Plus 18 Passive. Increases attack by 3% for Dark Player's level requirement. 30. After sighing over this for 2 seconds, I sent messages to Gue Guzi and Du 13. Go to the Eastern Gate Bridge of Floating Ice City, we have a new commission. I repaired my equipment, saving 2 gold, and left the frost mound with my sword. I walked toward Floating Ice City. In any case, Gue Guzi and Du 13 would need half an hour to arrive. Frost Forest had become a popular leveling place. I moved along the borders of the forest. The red name on top of my head was 2 I. Catching. As a powerful undead swordsman, I was not recognized by the night creatures, and not accepted by the Silver Moon Alliance. Therefore, in the wilds, I was read to everyone. Chapter 48 Unrivaled You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Alisku I sprinted to Floating Ice City. There were many players teaming up outside the city. Seeing my red name, many gazes fell on me, some clearly malicious. So I revealed my name. As expected, the words, Broken Halberd Sinks into Sand, had a deterrent effect. The third dot ranked expert of Floating Ice City's heavenly ranking. Many people who had wanted to kill the red name shrank back. I went to the stone bridge at the eastern gates of Floating Ice City. From a distance, Su Yang and Muro Mingyue were waiting there. Su Yang was still dressed in armor and holding a sword. Muro Mingyue had changed into a white robe and looked as pure as snow. However, the amused smile on her face and her astounding figure wasted this pure robe. People with clear sight could see that this woman was very strong and should not be provoked. Come here, Brother Broken Halberd. Su Yang came over with a smile. I nodded slightly and said in a hoarse undead voice, I have two fellows. Wait a few moments, they will come soon. Good, dot Su Yang's gaze swept across my equipment. He sighed. Brother Broken Halberd, your chest armor. The light looks very unfamiliar. What grade is it? Definitely not bronze or steel, right? I smiled and said honestly, yes, dark steel, grade, soul turmoil armor. 48 defense, plus 11 stamina. Not bad, right? Su Yang nodded. Huh, very impressive. I listed my item stats. This would arouse trust. The other party was Su Yang, so I didn't need to worry about his greed being aroused as well. He wasn't that kind of person. In my memories, I only had two impressions of this honest big man. One was that he was an honest and forthright person. The second was that he was very loyal to he. -E. This was like me. Even until the end, he did not give up on he -E and ancient sword dreaming souls. 
At this time, Morong Mingyue walked over, and suddenly smiled mysteriously when she looked at me. She said coolly, Broken halberd sinks into sand, I heard that you fought the domination clan of the Gods of Destruction Guild in Venomous Wasp Forest, right? I nodded and did not speak. Morong Mingyue continued, Ha, how did you have the courage to challenge five experts on the heavenly ranking alone? I smiled and said in a deep voice, in reality, being enemies with the top dot ranking experts of the domination clan doesn't just require courage. Oh, what else is needed? Muro Mingyue asked with a smile. I thought for a moment and said, everyone. Everyone has a reverse scale, a bottom line. The domination clan walked right over it. Even at the risk of death, I will slaughter them all. Oh. Muro Mingyue giggled and did not pursue. She turned to her teammate and said, Su Yang, I remember that you had been spawn camped by Domination Clan a few days ago for an entire night. It could be said that Broken Halberd sinks into sand got revenge for you, right? Su Yang laughed out loud. Thank you, Brother Broken Halberd. I said directly, that is not very sincere. I am one of the founders of the Bloody Mercenaries, and our aim is to make money. Rather than verbally thanking me, how about you toss me a gold coin? Murong Mingyue snorted in laughter, and took out a shiny gold coin. She said, I'll give, but are you willing to take? I reached out with my bone fingers, the gold coin landing in my bony palm. I smiled slightly. If beauty Murong is willing to give, of course I'm willing to take. Murong Mingyue stilled and looked dazedly at me. I really do not understand you. I smiled. It was for the best that she didn't. Else, there would be no place for me to hide. I asked a thousand, ten thousand times in my mind. Mingyue, he e. Has boss joined the game? But I could not open my mouth. The trouble that would ensue if these words were uttered were too much for me to endure Su Yang suddenly said, Mingyue, didn't boss say that she'll be on today? When is she getting on? Muro Mingyue laughed softly. Why are you in such a hurry? She has some meetings during the day. She probably will only have time to get on around 8 p.m. She's level zero and will be in the starting village. We have to go take her along when the time comes, and try to reach level 10 to come to Floating Ice City. Yes. Su Yang put his sword on his shoulders and laughed. I'm looking forward to it. Once boss enters heaven blessed, I'll be as though I had gained a new spine, full of energy. Muro Mingyue's eyes darkened and she said with red eyes. Pity that Lian Xing went overseas to study and Lu Chen. Ah, I hadn't thought that ancient sword dreaming souls would end up like this. As she spoke, Muro Mingyue glanced secretly at me. I immediately turned around and looked at the water flowing below the stone bridge. I gritted my teeth. He Yi's smile and spirit of grief appeared in my mind as she said to the four of us, Do you know why the guild is called the Ancient Sword Dreaming Souls? It means us having warrior's soul, using our life to defend our dreams. Dreams and warrior's soul. The repeated bloodshed and slaughter. Su Yang and I had fought at the front lines for more than a year and did not fail the title of Warrior Soul. But our dreams were ultimately crushed by martial god Candlelight Shadow. I clenched my fists and swore inside. Candlelight Shadow brought his Candle Dragon Guild to Heaven Blessed. Soon, I will return all the pain and suffering many times over. A few minutes later, two people arrived. It was Du 13 and the Red Dot named Gue Guzi. Su Yang was slightly shocked and said with a smile, is a red name the characteristic of the bloody mercenaries? Gui Guzi smiled darkly. Giant, your flesh must be very hard, and difficult to chew. Su Yang raised his sword. I can only apologize for the texture. Du 13 and I laughed. Muro Mingyue said, let's focus on the matter at hand. Come, let us leave. The boss is in a small mountain pass in Frost Forest. Let's get there before other people arrive. Yes. 
Our group of five left floating ice city. Su Yang said, we have four offensive players. We should take a tactician along. Their encourage and iron wall buffs would come in handy. I shook my head. No need for that. 5% attack power is not necessary. We'll just go and kill the boss. All right. We entered Frost Forest. This time, the five of us formed a team, and a relatively strong one. Gue Guzi had reached level 30, and learned Undead Knight's level 30 skills. He should have become much stronger. Su Yang was a violent warrior. Murong Mingyue's equipment was pretty complete, so her healing output wouldn't be bad. As we neared the mountain pass, we saw some players leveling up nearby. Su Yang grew anxious and shouted, Let's go, the boss is just ahead. Don't let someone else steal it. I nodded and pulled out the weeping fire blade with a clang. I sprinted with Gue Guzi and Du 13 following behind me in a triangle formation. We're here. Hidden between the trees was a boss monster holding a spear, his red eyes fixed on our party. Su Yang rejoiced. Luckily, those people haven't found the boss. Otherwise, we would have failed the quest. I glanced at Gue Guzi and shouted, Start. Gue Guzi quickly charged forward, stabbing three times at the tree monster with his spear. 157, 176. 159, his actions erased more than 500 of the boss's HP, Su Yang's eyes were wide as he murmured, what a strong guy, this Gue Guzi. This was death combo, a skill of undead knight. Three successive attacks, each attack equal to 50% ordinary damage. As the skill's rank increased, the damage would increase as well. The tree monster was a kind of plant-based monster. It possessed a vine. Like body. Its arms were powerful and it could launch an endless onslaught of vine spears. It was an extremely powerful long-range monster. Also, this boss was top among the monsters in the forest. Level 32. It could threaten the lives of players under level 40 like us. Do 13 also went forward with his weapon and used a heavy slash to take less than 200 HP of the boss. His strength was clearly far from Gue Guzi's. I arrived, my sword sweeping, fainting and attacking again. Green light wrapped around the sword hilt as the slayer slash crashed down. Miss. 1500. Murong Mingyue's mouth gaped at the first attack missing. She clearly had not expected a top 3 expert to miss an attack. As the second attack's 1500 damage floated up, her mouth could no longer close. She clearly had not expected a human player to deal so much damage. Su Yang roared, colliding with the boss. The warrior level 30 skill, Assault, had a certain chance of stunning the opponent. Su Yang's attack coincidentally stunned the boss. Gue Guzi and I took the opportunity to attack. In less than half a minute, the boss had lost half of its HP. Murong Mingyue continued to swing her staff, holy light washing over us, replenishing our HP to full. Long time no see, but Sister Mingyue was still full of milk to feed us. We were very smooth in our slaughter. But just as it was about to die, a group of people appeared from the woods behind us. Them again. Gue Guzi gritted his teeth. The unwelcome guests were the people from the Shadow Clan, our old enemies. Usually, Gue Guzi and I would not even care about such shrimps. But right now, we were killing a boss. If these people interrupted our rhythm, we may be the ones killed. Murong Mingyue was extremely nervous and asked, what to do? I pushed the tree monster away with a blow and said, Little Gue, 13, continue to kill the boss. Leave these people to me. But there's a dozen of them. Gue Guzi hesitated. This guy was not worried about me. He saw potential for some PvP action, and his battle thirst couldn't be contained. I held the weeping fire blade horizontally and headed toward the members of the Shadow Clan. Behind me, the cyan fire cloak flapped loudly. 
my features turned cold, like a god of death descending onto a mortal plane. Humph, how about I show you why I'm unrivaled? I smiled dismissively and looked at the members of the Shadow Clan ahead. Chapter 49 Chanel you are listening at NovelFull.audio Translator Aliska's Shadow Maple charged over, the sword in his hand glistening red. This was a signature melee skill, assault. I faced him head dot on, puffing my chest to tank the blow, while my weeping fire blade drew a beautiful arc behind the target. Boom! The blade accurately hit the back of Shadow Maple's head, a weak spot. 421 points of damage floated up. Shadow Maple was shocked but I had already turned my body, quickly stabbing his chest. With a spurt, blood gushed everywhere. The top player of the Shadow Clan was dead, his limp body slowly stumbling to the grass, a corpse awaiting revival. Shadow Volcano was furious upon seeing the events unfold, jumping into the action himself. Light flashed on his blade, Wanderer's level 20 skill, Sword Drag Slash. Shah. Dust billowing under my feet, I took several steps back. Shadow Volcano's earlier target on my position became useless. He hesitated whether he should continue the technique. If he did, it would surely miss. He froze all over. I wanted to laugh at seeing this. This person's mechanics were so bad. One had to leave enough room to move when they used their blade. He did not know such simple logic. Accompanied by the cold wind, I came abruptly in front of Shadow Volcano. I stared at him with my undead eyes. Shadow Volcano felt a wave of goosebumps. What? What do you want? Miss. 1280, I did not respond and killed him using pardon followed by a basic attack. Seeing Shadow Volcano slump to the ground, I sighed inwardly. Rank 3 pardon is too strong. It's definitely my trump card in PvP. I suddenly felt pain in my chest. Snap snap snap. It was punctured with arrows. The four archers of the Shadow Clan had all raised their longbows and shot accurately at me. A string of damage numbers flew over my head, 75. Ednell.co 59. 90, any of these attacks wasn't a problem, but four of these at the same time dealt a significant amount of damage. In almost an instant, I became a porcupine. Moreover, a burning fire dragon suddenly burst out of the ground I was standing on, flames consuming my body. I felt pain all over, as if I was actually burning, losing a huge chunk of my HP in the process. 289, damn. They have a high dot level mage, a powerful one at that. I hurriedly grabbed a rank 2 health potion and drained it. At the same time, I glanced and saw a female mage dressed in black robes, chanting spells. Balls of flame were floating at the tip of her staff, she was the high dot level mage. Shadow Chanel LV.32 Bronze Mage A Level 32 Mage It seemed that her staff is steel or even dark steel grade. Otherwise, just one rank 3 fire dragon spell wouldn't have taken so much of my HP. Murong Minue I shouted, disengaging the group. Murong Minue was a pro priest and immediately gave me a healing spell with a wave of her hand. Plus 312. TSK TSK, very good. Sister Minue is full of milk. Such powerful healing could rank in the top of floating ice city. Despite the healing, it was unrealistic to challenge a whole mob of people alone, especially with Shadow Chanel's attacks being so powerful. One mistake and we would all be dead. Shadow Chanel's attack power undoubtedly raised the morale of the Shadow Clan. Shadow Deep Sea held his longbow and shouted, Chanel, give the boy a taste of a few more fire dragon spells. Archers, concentrate your fire on him. I don't believe we can't kill this undead swordsman with all of our firepower. Damn, he just had to have a priest helping. Humph. It is Murong Mingyue of Ancient Sword Dreaming Souls. We'll first kill Broken Halberd sinks into sand, then it's Murong Mingyue's turn. I did not retreat, 
advancing with a powerful strike to the chest of a casting mage. This young mage didn't have much battle experience, clearly misjudging our distance, and didn't understand that he shouldn't cast spells so close. He could only watch as weeping fire blades stabbed into his chest, drawing blood and sending him straight to the graveyard. Shadow Chanel bit her red lips and said angrily, Go die. Arctic rain. Crash. A small dot scale rain of hail came down from the sky. This was a powerful level 30 mage skill, an AoE ability. 75, 77. 71, three successive attacks. Clearly this arctic rain was not at a high rank, so its damage was subpar. It was not as good as using a single dot target spell like fire dragon spell. I went all in, dashing next to Shadow Chanel in two steps and shouting, Slayer Slash. A ball of blue light flashed, and my strongest killing move landed. However, Shadow Chanel suddenly stepped on the ground with a dismissive smile. A golden shield appeared around her, a life dot saving level 30 mage skill, magic shield. PFF. The Slayer Slash softly hit the shield, but was unable to shatter it. However, it had taken away half of its durability, since my attack power was no joke. I pulled my sword and the magic shield shattered with a pop. Shadow Chanel stilled, hurriedly retreating as she threw an icicle. Snap! My body froze all over, my movement speed considerably reduced in an instant. My chest was once again struck with multiple arrows, and my HP quickly decreased. I immediately retreated. I hadn't been able to instantly kill that high dot level mage, so it really wasn't possible to defeat this group on my own. At this time, a comforting voice came over. The tree monster boss finally passed away with a scream. Su Yang held the boss monster's vine in his hand and shouted joyously, Brother Broken Halbert, I've finished the quest. Gue Guzi turned into a shadow and arrived, starting an ambush against the shadow clan from the flanks. His spear danced and the death combo immediately hit Shadow Deep Sea. Then, he quickly turned and swept two nearby enemies like a cyclone. TSK TSK, the kids growing. As expected of bloody mercenaries general. Su Yang also came over, swinging his weapons. My HP quickly filled up with Moro Minyue's healing, a rank 2 health potion and rank 3 regeneration of the undead. I thrust into action, my target once again Shadow Chanel. This mage was too big a threat. She could kill Mirong Minyue in two seconds. Fortunately, she had no breathing room to have done that so far. The Shadow Clan was not an especially powerful clan, especially compared to the Domination Clan. They were even inferior to Mad Dragon. Only Shadow Chanel was truly strong. The others were at most second dot class experts, or worse. Under my pursuit, Shadow Chanel did not even have a chance to stop and chant. If she stopped, I might kill her instantly. She had seen the power of pardon. She didn't dare take the risk. However, I was not the one to kill Shadow Chanel. The instant I destroyed her magic shield, Su Yang charged over and killed her in two blows. Gue Guzi was madly chasing the stragglers, like a rabid dog chasing chickens. Gue Guzi was famous in the floating ice city area, and had once claimed the number one spot in the rankings. Such a powerful person had to have a unique fighting style. His movements were grand yet precise. His attacks were powerful yet clean and brisk. He was much stronger than 13 and Su Yang. Five minutes later, everyone from the Shadow Clan was dead. All of us only had minor injuries and we recovered under Muro Minyue's heels. Su Yang laughed. So enjoyable, the clowns of the Shadow Clan really sought their own demise this time. Last time, they wanted to steal our equipment, this time they wanted revenge. Their deaths were well dot deserved. Ha, huh, this battle was so enjoyable. I glanced at him and wanted to say my usual response from when we played together, enjoyable my ass, I almost died. Of course, I couldn't say that now. Fortunately, 
Su Yang and Muro Mingyue were my customers, and we were just working for them. The client was king, so we had to adjust our attitudes accordingly. Muro Mingyue walked forward and gave me ten gold. She said with a smile, thank you so much. This is the fee, do not mind it being so small. Maybe we'll have a chance to work together in the future, I put away the gold, nodded and did not say anything. Muro Mingyue was a pretty rich woman. She said such a thing because she was He Yi's assistant. He Yi was the vice president of the GGS Asia region. Muro Mingyue's financial situation was naturally pretty good. Accepting the money, I smiled and bowed. See you later then. Amen. As I spoke, I gave Gui Guzi and Du Thirteen a look. I took them out of the forest and walked toward floating ice city on foot. Muro Mingyue shouted from behind me. Ah, why don't you use a return scroll? I turned and laughed, my voice hoarse. Gotta save some gold. Muro Mingyue stilled, on the verge of saying something, but didn't speak. Gue Guzi walked side by side with me, boss broken halberd, our grudge with the shadow clan has solidified. What do you plan? We are only three people. Their clan has so many people and will definitely cause trouble. I glanced at him and said gravely, little Gue, you can't just look at the surface. We are few in number but united. The shadow clan has many people, but they are divided. Also, their strength is at most second dot class, they're not strong enough to give a headache. Gue Guzi nodded. I followed up, coming clean. Truth be told, I offended the domination clan of gods of destruction yesterday. Gue Guzi had a surprised expression. I smiled. Never mind. Some people are just destined to clash with us. If we can't avoid it, we can only fight. Amen. Gue Guzi nodded, clenching his fists and saying, No matter what, with us three brothers united, the domination clan cannot destroy the bloody mercenaries. Heh, naturally. We walked back to Floating Ice City. It was 11.30 am in the real world. There were a lot of players in the plaza, shouting all kinds of things, team up for Venomous Wasp Forest, level 30 and above. Missing 4. Accepting a large amount of glutinous rice raw materials. 5 silver per stack, come. Buying rank 2 wolf skins, 1 silver each. No limit. I walked to the center of the plaza and shouted, level 3 armorsmithing material, the skin of hell wind wolf. Contact me quickly if you want, I can give a discount when buying in bulk. After my shout, no one answered. Clearly, there were not many players who had reached rank 3 armorsmithing. I groaned and continued to shout. After a long while, my heart was cold. Screw that, I'll just pack up and go grind. Just as I was about ready to go, a voice came from behind. Brother who is selling wolf skin. How much will your skins cost? Chapter 50 Extravagant Spending You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Translator Alisku I looked around, discovering that the question came from a level 27 warrior. He had a burly build and looked like a black bear that wandered out of the forest. His name was Lace Skirt. The name was more impressive than the man himself. Lace Skirt came up to me, smiling. Brother, I heard that you have rank 3 wolf skin. Not bad, the game's only been out for a week and someone actually has rank 3 wolf skin. Can I check out your goods? It was clear that he didn't really believe that I had rank 3 wolf skin. I took out a 85 quality hell wind wolf skin and with a wave of my hand, the wolf skin's properties vividly floated in the air. Dot lace skirt looked rather shocked. Ha! Huh. You actually have it. Mn, I nodded. How many do you need? Lace skirt's gaze swept through the people around us before whispering, I'll buy everything you have. I won't hide it from you, but I am probably the highest dot level armorsmith in all of Floating Ice City. My armorsmithing is already rank 3. I can make level 25 iron dot grade leather and chain armors, 
but I never had the chance because there were no rank 3 materials on the market. I asked a friend to help me kill high dot level greedy wolves, but he only got 5 after an entire day of grinding. And that's not even enough to make a single leather armor. I laughed inwardly. Level 25 iron dot grade leather armor, damn. That was probably the highest dot grade common public could ask for at the current state of the game. He could probably sell them for around 5 gold each. If I let him mass produce it, wouldn't he be making a gargantuan profit? As such, I stuck my hand in my bag and rummaged around before I took out 100 hides of the hell wind wolves. I smiled. I have a lot more. Give me an offer, how much are you paying for one? Lace Skirt muttered, brother, let me make myself clear first. I've established a gaming workshop and we have a total of 11 people. Our only goal is to become the number one armorsmithing workshop in Floating Ice City. The workshop itself has only just been founded not too long ago. My brothers and I aren't rich people so when it comes to prices, I obviously want them to be as low as possible. I nodded. Then give me an offer. How much are you going to pay for one rank 3 wolf skin? I'll sell it to you as long as it's not unreasonable. Okay. I can only offer 5 silver for each wolf skin. I was stunned when he made his offer. Wasn't that too far from the price I anticipated? 5 silver is too low. I frowned. I'd get at least 30 silver each if I sold it to the Domination Clan. I'm absolutely not selling that low, sorry. Sigh, wait. Lace Skirt called out to stop me. He hesitated for several seconds before saying with gritted teeth. Fine, let's be friends. I'll give you a reasonable offer. 20 silver for each rank 3 pelt. If you add me as a friend, this price will never change. We can establish long-term cooperation. I thought about it. I could always loot pelts with death plunder after killing wild animals, so I had to have an endpoint for them to unload every once in a while. Having a stable demand source was a feasible idea, cooperation was a feasible offer. I quickly added lace skirt to my friend list and took out 457 wolf skins. I have 457 skins, making that a total of 91.4 gold. Since it's our first time cooperating, I'll sell it to you for 90 gold. Okay. Lace skirt quickly traded me 90 gold. Seems like this armorsmithing workshop had some strength. They probably sold a ton of low dot level leather armors to make this much money. That kind of business seemed to earn a lot. 90 gold immediately filled my pockets, my balance once again passing 100 gold. Immensely satisfied, I took a while to browse around in floating ice city's plaza. I found two level 30 tamers selling pets. They were both shouting their prices, locked in a fierce competition. When I took a look around Floating Ice City, I saw more and more level 30 players. 10th place on the ranking list was already level 32. Based on Floating Ice City's ranking, level 30 and above players already numbered over a thousand. Having crossed the power spike threshold, all of them were looking for a pet to aid them in their adventures. Pet could assist them passively and was therefore absolutely more useful than a piece of high dot level equipment as a result, the pet market was finally blooming, gaining a lot of traction. The two tamers almost spat out their saliva as they shouted, level 1 green praying mantis, 3.5 dot star attack, 18 billion. The price is only 40 gold. High dot level experts, come have a look. Level 1 wasp, 4.5 dot star attack. An absolute quality product. 19 billion, only 150 gold. Come and get it. I spent an entire day catching this one. Hurry before it sold out. There were a few pets in front of the two tamers. One only sold green praying mantises and the other only sold wasps. Each of them had three pets. Mantises had BNs of 12, 15 and 18. The wasps, 11, 14 and 19. From the numbers alone, the last wasp was the most useful. 
It was just a bit on the expensive side at 150 gold. That wasn't something even I could take out at this time. I shook my head. Forget it. I was thinking about getting a wasp pet for Gue Guzi to help him grind. I don't have enough money at the moment, maybe next time. Just as I was about to turn around, I suddenly noticed a biting cold flame behind me, near the ground. It was actually a flaming sword floating in midair, with two red eyes on its hilt. That's. A fucking pet. I suddenly realized something. My eyes slowly moved up and saw a pair of snowy thighs. Closely following those thighs was a battle armor with light rotating around it. Its lines were beautiful yet graceful. The owner of those thighs was also incredibly beautiful. A pair of deep eyes brimming with ridicule greeted me. There was only one girl this timely with such a pet. It was undoubtedly Lin, wine fantasy, Geeson. Uh, what's this? I bent down and stepped on the long sword with multiple blood dot colored barbs. Lin Eason answered unhappily, that's the fire blade I sent you. It's also a kind of pet. For dot star attack and 4.5 dot star HP, high HP and attack pet with 34 billion. Not bad, huh? Amen, not bad. I nodded. Lin Eason's fire blade was already level 17. I then released my precious dark wasp, the light buzz of its dark cyan wings resounding. It was on guard when it saw the fire blade and looked as if it was about to attack at any moment. My dark wasp recently reached level 24 and was still rather weak. So weak that I couldn't bear to let it join me in the previous PvP battle against the Shadow Clan. Its level was too low, it would have easily gotten one dot shot. Lin Eason's gaze was immediately attracted to my dark wasp. Eyes filled with love, she smiled. Oh, that's the boss dark wasp you caught. Emin, I nodded, and proudly said, 6. Star attack, 5.5. Star agility. Assassin. Type pet. Not bad, huh? Humph, Lin Eason shot a smile at me and probed, Are you selling this dark wasp? No, why? I thought you bloody mercenaries were even willing to sell your bodies. Lin Eason widened her sparkling eyes. She looked at me innocently when she said words that nearly made me go berserk. We don't sell our bodies. I explained. We bloody mercenaries are all righteous people who sell our bodies, not our skills. No. I meant sell our skills, not our bodies. Oh, I understand. No need to explain. Lin Eason covered her mouth as she laughed lightly. I didn't know what to say. It was obvious that I made things worse the more I explained. However, there was one thing certain. I would never sell my dark wasp. A top dot tier pet like that was an asset when I roamed the world as I pleased in the future. How could I possibly sell it this early into the game? Lin Eason and I chatted beneath Floating Ice City's icy gate. She asked me if my bloody mercenaries were willing to join her guild while I asked her if she wanted to buy gold. In the end, we both declined each other. Fruit Knife Goddess Lin Eason's fame had already spread throughout Floating Ice City, so I attracted countless dagger-like gazes when I walked together with her. Walking with a beauty was absolutely a special kind of pleasure and torture. At this time, a party of people on horses strutted over, showing off their might. It was astonishingly the Mad Dragon Guild. Sitting at the head of the group was Roaming Dragon. This dumbass was definitely rich. He was already clad in a set of full bronze dot great equipment that shouldn't be too far off from what Lin Eason and I were wearing in terms of quality, but it was obvious that he had bought it all with real money. TCH, a trace of disdain flashed in Lin Eason's eyes when she saw a roaming dragon. She turned back to me and smiled. I heard you broke off with dominating Heaven Blade. MN, I nodded. They're complete bullies. Bloody mercenaries and the Domination Clan have already burned all bridges. Remember to help us out once you've established your guild. It's not like I have any huge conflict with dominating Heaven Blade. Lin Eason said with a stifled laugh, 
clearly implying that she didn't plan to help me. Forget it, I can't count on a petty woman like her. We watched Roaming Dragon walk up to a tamer. How much are you selling this 18 billion wasp? 150 gold. I'll buy it for 120 gold. Deal. Roaming Dragon quickly snatched the level 1 wasp and passed it to unyielding Mad Dragon who was behind him. He really was rich. 120 gold was almost 10,000 RMB and he gave it away just like that. Roaming Dragon stared at the tamer and then suddenly smiled. What other top dot tier pets do you have? Don't worry about me not having enough money, take them all out. That tamer hesitated for a few seconds before saying, I also have a level 1 greedy wolf. For dot star attack, BN29. It's really expensive. I've been trying to find a customer who can afford it. Can you? The tamer shouted out loud and a hexagramic array appeared in front of him. A fire dot red wolf cub soon appeared. It was indeed a level 1 greedy wolf. Greedy Wolf was already a top dot tier attack dot type pet that was not any inferior to a pet like Wasp, and its BN was also 29. It was almost as impressive as Lin Eason's Fire Blade. One could only imagine how much it would cost. Roaming Dragon looked at the level 1 Greedy Wolf and his eyes instantly shone. He laughed out loud and said, There's not a single pet in Heaven Blessed that I can't buy. This level 1 greedy wolf has a BN of 29 right. Alright, I'll buy it for 100,000 renminbi. I can transfer the money to you right now. Will you sell it to me? The tamer's mouth gaped. He was soon defeated by money and nodded. Sell, sell. My ICBC account number is triple X.